Hello, I am going to be telling the story of Pierre Seal. Pierre Seal was a Holocaust victim, but his story is unique in the fact that he was not Jewish, like many Holocaust victim stories we already know. You see, Pierre Seal was gay. Because of this, his story is not widely known or even shown in modern day media. Pierre Seal was born into a middle-class Catholic family on August 16, 1923, in Alsace, France. He lived a very happy childhood, although at a young age he did realize that he was gay. Being as devout as his parents, Pierre went to confess. The priest he confessed to then proceeded to harass him and convince Seal that he was a horrible and disgusting person. This made Seal hate himself until his later teenage years. By that time, he had accepted that he was different and he started flaunting the Zazu fashion, which was that of homosexuals in France. He even started attending parties held by the local homosexuals and the bourgeoisie. It was on his way home from one of these parties that Seal's watch was stolen. He then walked to the police station to report the theft. He was received well until the police officer learned of his location at the time of the theft. The officer then proceeded to yell slurs at him and tell him that he was a disgusting person and that he should not continue with his homosexual activities. Of course, those didn't stop. Pierre Seal was not aware that after this, his name was put on a list of known homosexuals in France. A few months later, Germany took over France, and he was summoned by the Gestapo. At the Gestapo's facility, Pierre was held with a dozen or so other men accused of the same crime. Homosexuality. They were forced to kneel on rulers while the Gestapo interrogated them and often tortured them. There were times where the officers would break the rulers and use them to rape the men. They were all then thrown into a cell that was very crowded and was eventually covered in blood. Pierre spent 10 days and 10 nights enduring that torture. He was then sent to a concentration camp, Schirmeck, which was outside of Alsace, France. When he got there, he was told to take off his clothes, go shower, and then go get his head shaved. The man who shaved his head knowing his reason for being in the concentration camp, carved a swastika into the back of his head. Seal has said that the worst thing that had ever happened to him in that camp happened just weeks after arriving. All of the prisoners were forced to go to the roll call site and gather the officers then brought out a young man. Pierre recognized the young man as his lover from Alsace. They then stripped the young man and put a bucket over his head. <clears throat> that man was only 18 years old and he was eaten alive by dogs. Pierre spent six months in the concentration camp before being let out. They said that he was re-educated and did not have the sickness of homosexuality anymore. And he was let go. He was even granted German citizenship and was allowed to salute the Nazi flag and say, Hail Hitler. Seal then got on a train back to Alsace and 
went home. When he got there, his father gave him a pocket watch as a welcome home gift and then proceeded to tell him that they were never to speak of the reason for his internment at Sherbeck. Seal ate dinner with his family and then proceeded to hold himself up in his room for weeks. He only left to report to the Gestapo. He continued like that for months before he was drafted into the war. Pierre was being forced to fight for the people who had put him through so much, starved him, beat him, raped him, and called who he is a sickness. Nevertheless, Pierre, without wanting to, went to the front lines. There he watched many men die. A couple of them even died in his arms. He was sent to the Russian front, and when they lost, he had no idea. He was abandoned and he had to find his way back to civilization. Seal so followed the Druze all the way to France. There were some bumps along the way, but otherwise it was relatively peaceful. Seal so was then left at a hospital where he was allowed to recover from the aspects that the illnesses he had received from being in the cold for so long, and just overall fatigue. Then they sent him to a camp, which would help them with repatriatization. Um, they set up tents, and um, although he didn't understand it, they placed him at the head of his little section. Um, yeah. It wasn't until a couple of months later that he was allowed to return home and he was actually on one of the last boats. Um, when he got home, his mother was really sick and his father still wouldn't talk of the reason for his deportation. His brothers and his younger sister were already married and living their own lives. Seal was the only person living with his parents. Um, he proceeded to help take care of his mother, who was basically bedridden at that point. Um, they had a very close relationship, and eventually she got him to open up about his struggles. Although for years and years, she was the only one he had told. She died, I think it was two years later, and his father died just a year afterwards, leaving Seal alone. He hasn't resorted to sending his profile off to the Catholic Church to be matched with someone um, so that he could get married, because he was keeping everything a secret at that point. Um, him and the young woman he met went on a couple dates and then got married. They then proceeded to have a couple children together. Their life was rough because Seal was not open about the reason for his internment and he resorted to drinking. Eventually his wife filed for a divorce. He then went even deeper down into his hole of despair. He was drinking more. He was smoking. He wasn't even drinking for pleasure. He wanted to kill himself. He spent multiple years like that before going to a conference um, 
held by a homosexual interned at a German concentration camp. He, he waited his turn afterwards and proceeded to tell the man his story and that he had gone through the same exact thing in a different camp. The man then said that they had not found a single person from Alsace who had survived the homosexual deportations. It was then that Pierre decided that he needed to speak out, although he wanted to remain anonymous. He, he His interview was recorded and sent out although it did not gain much attention. Later, the Pope was supposed to be coming to France, but canceled because a bunch of homosexual youth were going to be staying at the same hotel as he was. This outraged Seal, and he decided that he was going to break his silence. He drafted a letter for six months after that and eventually sent it to his family and many other politicians in France. Um, his employers um, were fine with it, which he was very surprised with, and his wife now knowing um, the reason for why he was so distant with his family halted the divorce and said that just a separation of property and other things um, would suffice. Pierre Seal proceeded to tell his story to everyone. Um, it didn't gain much traction, but he was telling it and he had youth, local youth, who supported him and were willing to help him on his journey. They even took him back to Shermak and tried to show him what had been done there. Um, none of the buildings had been kept or restored, and um, he spoke out about the destruction of history. Pierre later um, decided to get back into the social world, um, the dating pool, if you will, um, and he met a young man named Eric, who has, he spent the last almost two decades of his life with. Um, he eventually died in... Pierre Seal died on November 25th, 2005. He leaves with him a legacy of strength and an overall message of standing up for who you are and who you want to become. I'm hoping that with this video there are some people that be can become more tolerant and that maybe some people can learn some more history about the um, the oppression of queer people and what has happened to them throughout history. Um, anyway, my main source for this whole video was Pierre Seal's memoir. Um, I ordered it off of Amazon. It is available there if you would like to read it. Um, I really suggest it. It's a very hard read for me personally, but um, I feel like it's worth it to get to know his story more in depth and to um, really understand what he went through. So... Thank you for listening to his story and 
I hope that you learn something and have maybe maybe become more tolerant. Thank you.